I got a 2TB Bodocera hard drive that comes preloaded with thousands of games. You can boot to this hard drive to turn any computer into an emulation system. And you want to know if it's any good, right? Well, so, so do I. So let's check it out together, shall we? Hello, hi there, I'm TechDweeb, welcome, thanks for clicking on the video. You'll never believe this guys. This. This right here. This isn't actually an audio cassette. It's a hard drive. It just looks like an audio cassette. It's camouflage. It's, it's, so if robbers come into your home and are like, give me all your hard drives and robs or we'll kill your family. And you can be like, okay, here you go. And they'll be like, what about that thing right there? And you'll be like, that? Oh, that's just my audio cassette. And they'll be like, okay, good. Let's get out of here. Oh man, it's the cops! They'll never take me alive! For those of you who aren't 40-year-old nerds who grew up in the 80s, like me, back before Spotify or YouTube, heck, back before Napster and CDs, these are how we used to listen to music. This is an actual photo of me, back in the 80s, enjoying my tape. I mean, I, I guess I don't even need to say this stuff, but because this product has nothing to do with tapes, except that it looks like a tape. I wouldn't want you to be confused or anything. So I've had my eyes on these Bono Sarah hard drives for a while. I, I see them on AliExpress and Amazon and stuff, and they seem like a neat product. It's a cool idea, these things. You can use the computer that you already have, shove this in the USB port, boot to the external drive, and instantly turn any PC into an emulation machine. Bonocera is great because it's a lightweight operating system and an emulation front end. And you, you should get a bit better performance running your emulation in Bonocera rather than on Windows, even on the same PC. So instead of having to install Bonocera yourself on your computer or a USB stick, and then you need to download your own ROMs and make your library and scrape the box art and set it all up so that everything works, it could be a bit daunting, right? Well, this hard drive comes preloaded with Bonocera and thousands of games, like over 50,000 games. And the best part is that it comes all set up right out of the box. It's supposed to, anyways. <laughs> well, we'll check that out in a bit. In theory, you should be able to plug this into pretty much any PC and boot your system off the drive. This is called the Hyperbase BC2. The company who sells this, Jay Mackin, uh, Jay Mashin, Mackin, uh, they, they reached out and asked if I'd like one to review, <laughs> which was super surprising and very cool. I've wanted to check these out for a while now. I, I actually almost bought one on several occasions. <laughs> so I said, yeah, and th they just sent it to me. Yeah, you know, because I'm a big famous YouTuber now, everyone wants to send me stuff. <laughs> no big deal. Actually, this is the first time this has happened and I squealed like a little girl. But I told them I'd only take it if I could give my honest opinion on it. So I'm not going to pull any punches here. We're going to hear what I really think. And you want to know what I really think? Well, I, I don't know what I really think. I haven't really had a chance to check it out. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do that together, shall we? Right now. The PC that we'll be using is the budget gaming PC that I built for a video a few months ago. It has an i5-10400, 16GB of DDDDR4 RAM running at 3200MHz, and an RTX 3060 GPU. This is a high-end PC for emulation, but this hard drive will work on uh, uh, almost any PC, so the performance you get will be relative to the PC that you use. And if you're just going for like 1080p emulation, even a pretty low spec PC can handle basically anything you, you can want. So let's plug this in. There we go. I've already set up this PC to prioritize booting from USB, so in theory it should boot right into Bonocera. Let's see how it does. And... Alright. Hey, look at that. Okay, so uh, here we are. This is Bonocera. Neat. Um, so I could navigate with a keyboard, obviously, but I'm not gonna play games like that. I guess I'll need a controller, huh? Uh, I probably should have thought of that before I started. Um, oh, uh, wait, this computer has Bluetooth. So can I connect my Bluetooth controller? How does this work? 
Oh, okay, it works right away. It's detected and then, yeah, it's working good. Alrighty then, so what I'm gonna do now is connect this up to my display capture because I don't want to have to film my screen this whole time. Uh, we'll check out the game libraries and the performance and a bunch of systems and then we'll talk about if it's actually a good product, if it, if it does what it promises, if it works as it's intended, and whether or not it's a good value. But I want to be able to show you the real video feed directly, so let's uh, switch over to the display capture now. Okay, so as you can see, there are a ton of systems on this thing. I'm not going to list them all off, but I'll, I'll scroll through them quickly in case you want to pause the video. Oh, and the, the company did provide me with a list of the games on this system as well, so I'll link to that in the description below. I like how each of these shows a little description of the system, and it shows a photo. I like reading these little descriptions. It's all part of the fun. Oh, and since this is a PC, you probably have a keyboard already hooked up, so you can actually use these retro computer systems with your actual keyboard. So let's try some NES here. This is Adventure Island 3, and yeah, it's working good, as expected. For those that aren't familiar with Botocera, well, if you, if you press the select button and go down to the advanced sys system options, we get all the options for emulation right there. So one thing I sometimes like to do on these old retro systems is apply a shader. This is the curvature shader, and it makes it look like it's playing on an old CRT. It sort of looks like how I used to play these back in the day. I don't always like having shaders on, but sometimes I do, whenever I'm feeling nostalgic. I guess we gotta try some Burger Time, right? My favorite retro game. Actually, this is kind of annoying. I, I could show you this. Uh, the, the overlay covers a big part of the screen. So it's not really playable like this, even though I do like the overlay. This is just, this is just the Bono Sarah default though. It, it's dub. But if, if you want to play like this, you have to manually, manually go through in through RetroArch and resize the game screen. So I'll just disable the overlay. And then it's working great. Just some full screen burger time action. Okay, so the low end stuff's gonna run fine. No, we don't need to go through all that. So let's try out some 3D systems. And of course we can upscale them. So here's Blast Corpse on the Nintendo 64, upscaled to 1080p. This is a pretty decent gaming PC, and it can handle any of these older 3D systems, even upscaled to 4K. But if you're on a lower end PC, or a PC with integrated graphics, you can still totally play these 3D systems. Just, just know that you'll only be able to upscale a little bit or run on their native resolution on a, a low-end PC. Oh, and one more thing I wanted to mention, on uh, lots of those cheap Android boxes, the controls on Nintendo 64 are often uh, all wrong, all messed up, but they're set up perfect here, no issues, which was a nice surprise. Let's try another 3D system, Sega Saturn. Holy crap, they have like a thousand Sega Saturn games. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. I mean, lots of these are Japanese games, but plenty of English games in here too. Gonna fire up some Panzer Dragoon 2 with the retro CRT filter, just the way I like it. Oh man, this is just heavenly. I know, I know you can get this experience on like Android boxes and stuff, but what's cool here is that you're using the, your PC that you already have, which is probably more powerful than an Android box, so you don't have to worry about how stuff is gonna run. <laughs> I have a guy in my Discord server who's a Sega Saturn nut, and ever since I started talking with him, I've become much more interested in the Sega Saturn. It's not a system that I owned, and I'm realizing now how many great games there are on it. That's why a setup like this is great. You don't have to know which Saturn games are the good ones and download them by hand. You just get them all with this thing. Oh my gosh, so many PS1 games too! Whoa, 1500 games. <laughs> There's so many, it takes forever to scroll through them. But, but, but here's a bummer. I, I wanted to fire up Tekken 3, but they didn't have Tekken 3 on here. None of the Tekken games. <laughs> so I wasn't impressed with that. There are 1500 PS1 games, but they're missing the, the many important ones. Lots of Japanese titles in here. Now, they have tons of games here. There's a good chance that they do have whatever you want. Maybe I just got unlucky by choosing one of the few that they didn't have, but I wanted to mention that. And like I said, I have a games list that I'll include in the description below if you need to know what's on here before you buy it. The PS1 games I did test worked great though. I, I upscaled to 1080p because I'm just on a 1080p display, but I have no doubt I can easily go up to 4K without an issue, even on one of my lower end systems. <laughs> 4K PS1 isn't hard to do. I personally don't like upscaling these very old 3D systems. 
I like the big chunky pixels. But you have all the options in the world with Monocera. Every setting you could possibly want to tweak is at your fingertips. But before we move ahead to the next generation of 3D consoles, let's touch on the portable 3D consoles, because these are very interesting. First we have the DS. The DS it, it emulates great, obviously. You can upscale the graphics, and you know, DS games actually play great because you can use the right thumbstick as your cursor for touchscreen controls. And if you enable the hybrid layout, you can have one of your screens blown up nice and big. The DS is actually super enjoyable to play with a controller, the way they have it set up here. 3800 DS games included on this drive. That's crazy. And 400 PSP games. And PSP played like a dream too. This comes pre-set up with PPSSPP as the uh, default PSP emulator. And it's easy to go in and change the settings to get the best performance. Here I am upscaled to 6x PSP resolution in God of War, Ghost of Sparta. And this is one of the hardest to run PSP games and it's running fine here. It's great. I've actually had great luck with, up, uh, with emulating upscaled PSP, even on lower end systems. And this was a nice surprise, 3DS. Yeah, we have 3DS emulation on this thing. 465 3DS games come pre-installed. I'm used to those lower end Android boxes, I think, because I was totally not expecting to see 3DS on here. Even on my higher end emulation devices, the 3DS can struggle a bit, but it's, it's running fine here. Amazing. I've honestly never played 3DS upscale to HD resolutions before this moment, and I was surprised at how great the games looked and how well they ran, too. All right, let's move on to the higher end 3D systems that come installed on this drive. Cause I think that's really what you would buy this product for. Cause those are the big games to download, you know? So two terabytes of the high end 3D games, that's what you're getting here. So for Dreamcast, we get about 300 Dreamcast games. And Dreamcast ran great, obviously. Dreamcast runs on low end PCs and emulation devices. So I wasn't surprised that it ran great. Here. Of course, I'm upscaling this to 1080p, and one thing I love about Dreamcast emulation is that the emulators have built-in widescreen support, and most games can use it without issue. That's very cool, if you ask me. And as I was browsing through the games, I came across this, Evil Dead game on the, on, the, on the Dreamcast. I didn't even know there was an Evil Dead game on the Dreamcast. See, that's what I love about these emulation devices, discovering new games that I didn't know about, and I'm playing them, obviously. However, this one didn't work right away. Some weird graphical stuff. I, I tweaked some settings in Monocera and I could have fixed it. But when I switched the emulator to the standalone Redream emulator, it worked fine there. So it's not entirely smooth sailing, but at least you have the options you need to tweak stuff and get it working if you need to. GameCube is my favorite console to, of this generation to emulate. And they're using the standalone Dolphin emulator here. And it works beautifully, no issues at all. I was able to upscale to 1080p without the slightest hint of performance issues. I was curious to know if running off a hard drive uh, caused issues with the shader caching, but it really didn't. It felt uh, fine. It, there was no stuttering while I was playing. Loading times were nice and quick. And I can say from experience that GameCube will run at the default resolution, even on very low-end PCs. And uh, on mo any modest gaming PC, you can upscale to 4K, no problem. I was curious Curious to know if I launched Dolphin by itself using the F1 files menu, if I could add the widescreen patch for Metroid Prime 2, and yep, no issue at all. Here I am in Metroid Prime 2, running upscaled in widescreen with the widescreen patch applied, and it's working perfectly. And it comes with 135 GameCube games pre-installed. And of course we have PS2 on here. Games from these higher end 3D systems are, are really big. You know, some of them are several gigs each, which is why they don't come pre-installed on lots of emulation boxes you can buy. And that's where the big benefit to this device is. It has enough storage to come with lots of games from higher end systems. Not all the games. We don't have enough space on a two terabyte hard drive to store every GameCube and PS2 and PS3 and Wii game. But we got quite a few, which is cool. And PS2 is a much more CPU intensive system to emulate, so your performance so it'll depend quite a bit in this system on how good your emulation PC is. You can run okay on lower end PCs if you, you run at the default resolution, but if you want to upscale to 4K, for instance, you'll need a good gaming PC. You don't need a monster gaming PC, but some office PC with integrated graphics will, will struggle on this system. We also have Wii on here. 
Not a ton of Wii games, just 20 games, but even still, that's pretty cool. I wasn't expecting to see Wii games. At first, I tried it with the default settings, and it was running fine, uh, flawlessly. So I tried the same game, upscale to 1080p, and again, it's running awesome. But this will obviously depend on the PC you're using. However, considering that this is using the Dolphin emulator, like I said, that emulator works great even on low-end systems, so I think if you have any reasonably powerful PC, then you'll have no problem running Wii games, at least at their native resolution. But on a PC like this, you should be able to upscale to 4K with no issue if you're into that sort of thing. If you're using this with a controller, you'll have no problem running games that have native GameCube controller support. Like here we are in Mario Kart Wii, no extra setup required. However, for games that require the Wii pointer or gyro controls, they'll require you to go through Dolphin and manually set them up. You know, even on PC, this sort of thing could be tedious to get working correctly. I suggest you just stick with the games that support the GameCube controller or the Wii Classic controller, but if your favorite game needs motion controls, at least you do have the option here of launching Dolphin as a standalone app and then setting up the controls yourself. And finally, we have PS3. Well, I, we don't have much by way of PS3. We have one single game, and it's not even a 3D game. But it does have one game, and I launched it, and it worked fine. Took quite a while to launch to uh, pre-compile the shader cache, I think, but uh, it did load eventually. I think this was more of a proof of concept than anything. This is just here to show you that you can run PS3 on this system. You'll need to have your own ROBs, of course. PS3 games are usually like 5 to 10 gigs each, but at least it comes with the PS3 emulator installed and ready to go. And the, the one game they included, Rayman Origins, it worked fine. It worked great, actually. And one more thing that I didn't touch on yet. One more huge benefit is you could take this with you. It's portable, basically. You can run th this system on any of your PCs and go between them and bring all your save games and settings with you. So I think even someone like me, like a power user who already has ROMs and, and emulators set up on all his PCs, I'd, I could still make use of this thing. Or someone that goes between PCs a lot, like if you have multiple PCs in multiple houses, like if you have seven houses, each with their own PCs, and you don't want to have to deal with backing up your saves or whatever, just use this and you won't have to deal with any of that. Really, what you're paying for here is three things. The hard drive itself, the Bono Sarah system all set up, and the games. For the hard drive itself, well, this is going for about 95 USDs. A cheap 2 terabyte hard drive by itself from Amazon goes for about 60 USDs. So if you consider that 60 bucks of the cost of this thing is the drive itself, what do you get for that other 25 bucks? Well, for the system, there's definitely something to be said for having something that's all set up and ready to go. Not everyone is comfortable installing Bono Serra on an external hard drive. Not everyone has the patience to add all their ROBs and download all the box art. And if that's you, then this device might be right for you. Or if you can't get your own ROBs, maybe your internet is slow so you can't download the big games like GameCube games, or maybe you don't have the patience and the time to find ROBs, and I totally get that. This world of downloading game libraries and getting them all set up, it's not for everyone. You don't even need to lift a finger if you go with a device like this. We're talking about 50,000 games shipped to your door, ready to play, right away on the PC that you already have. There's a good chance that whatever game you ever had from your childhood is already on here ready to go. And like I said, they gave me a games list if you need that, and I'm going to link that in the, in the description below. As for the actual contents of the drive, well, the big star of the show is the 3D systems. You can get cheap Android boxes with all the games for the lower end systems right up to PS1. Every emulation device you can buy these days have all the SNES and Game Boy Advance games or whatever. But here we get 3,830 Nintendo DS games, 726 PSP games, 465 3DS games, 298 Dreamcast games, 232 GameCube games, 1,540 PS1 games. You do not get that on those Android box console things. And none of those Android boxes can play these games. Of course, you'll need a PC that can handle these, but even a very low-end gaming PC will be able to handle GameCube and Dreamcast or whatever. You might not be able to upscale to 4K, but you'll at least be able to play the games. I think you'd be surprised at how well GameCube runs, even on like a low-end office PC. Actually, I'm working on a video about that right now. What kind of emulation can you do on a very low-end PC? So get subscribed so you don't miss that. For me, I'm actually glad I have this thing. 
I have most of these games elsewhere, but just having a drive with Bonocera installed and thousands of games locked and loaded, this will be useful when I make emulation videos, testing emulation on different PCs and hardware configurations, and it'll just be fun to play with. I'm gonna have this hooked up to, to the gaming PC that I have on my TV, and I, I plan on playing with it quite a bit. I just started a Metroid Prime 2 playthrough, actually, <laughs> since you asked. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I'll leave a link to the product in the description below. And that brings us to the end. I'm curious to know what you think. Have you ever thought about picking up one of these Bonocera hard drives? Do you have one already? What has your experience been? Do you think it's a good product or useless? <laughs> I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video, or the thumbs down button if you didn't. Uh, subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. I'm TechDweeb, thanks for watching. Bye bye